Here we go. Let's start the PNC. <laughs> PNC mile 270. We've walked 10% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. This stretch of the trail took us through four unique and completely different landscapes. First was the Pacific Coast where I learned Renee's an ocean girl. She loves camping on the beach and playing in the tidal pools. We saw colorful starfish, a bunch of crabs, deer on the beach, and cute harbor seals. I picked up this rock at the start which I'll carry and return to the ocean at the end of our trip. The route took us into the rainforest which was a super muddy but quite unique landscape to walk through. We headed into the Olympic Mountains which were totally covered in snow. We decided we couldn't safely make it over the mountains so we backtracked a bit and took a lower route. Two of my siblings and their friends came to meet us for a night of camping on the trail. The official route includes a ferry ride. There's some whales out there, orcas. <laughs> We said goodbye to the Olympic Peninsula and hello to some islands on the Puget Sound. In this first 10% of the trail, we had plenty of opportunities to go swimming, and we also enjoyed our homemade dehydrated dinners. We can't wait to see what the next 90% of the trail will throw at us. Hello from PNC mile 540. We walked 20% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. The last 270 miles took us from the ocean east to the Cascade Mountains where we were worried about snow after our experience in the Olympics. We saw harbor seals in the sound, marmots in the mountains, and even our first black bear of the trip. We walked past refineries and clear cuts which stood in contrast to the remote public lands we also walked through. The trail passes near Tim's sister's house, so we stopped by for some wood-fired pizza and camped in her backyard. We each got our second pair of shoes. The cool spring finally gave way to summer, so we were optimistic about the snow conditions as we headed into the mountains. We were excited to find that despite the lingering snow, we're headed up there, the trail was manageable for us. Still, the trail threw other challenges at us, including difficult stream crossings, that was no joke. bushwhacking, and lots of downed trees to climb over. Thanks to the trail crews out there maintaining and building trails. There were some fun surprises too, like this cable car high above a stream and a relaxing hot spring. We can't wait to see what the next 80% throws our way. Hello from mile 810 on the PNC. We've walked 30% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. The last 270 miles started with a long 10 day stretch between towns, but when we emerged from the remote wilderness, we were in for a few surprises. We ate calorie dense foods and took advantage of cold mountain streams to rinse off ourselves and our underwear. We saw very few people, but lots of animals and animal signs. As we exited the wilderness, we entered cattle country and had a long road walk where we were in for our first surprise. A voice called out to us, offering us a beer. The Buchard Laird family was having a reunion, and even though we were strangers, they fed us and made us feel like we were part of the family. We picked up our summer attire and shipped our snow gear home. Our second surprise was a spontaneous meeting with Tim's mom and her boyfriend when they came and camped with us on the trail. We broke a tent stake, but just a day or two later found a replacement right next to the trail. The trail provides. Our final surprise was meeting Iguana, a fellow TikToker who is also hiking the Pacific Northwest Trail but in the opposite direction. We're having a blast out here. We've walked 40% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. The last 270 miles included two exciting milestones and one small hiccup. We crossed the Columbia River on foot. We just crossed the Columbia River. We'll be back at this exact spot in about a month as we're canoeing out towards the Pacific. Milestone number one, we made it to Idaho and entered grizzly country. We started carrying bear spray and we make sure to cook and store our food far away from our tent. There was a heat wave with temps over 100 degrees. It is so hot out here. So we did a lot of swimming and even found a water slide. Then came the hiccup. We lost our shared spork. Renee figured out that we could use tent stakes as chopsticks until we get a replacement. We passed through a few towns where we ate as much as possible, resupplied, and did showers and laundry. We each also picked up our third pair of shoes. And then we hit milestone number two. Hello, Montana. Goodbye, Idaho. We're getting closer and closer to our canoe. We've made it 50% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. During the last 270 miles of our trip, we achieved a big goal and overcame a logistical roadblock at the border. Montana gave us beautiful mountain sunsets, which were sometimes accompanied by swarms of mosquitoes. Of the weasel fire was burning near the trail, so we had to detour around it. Our trail touched the border a few times, which is marked by a line of cut trees. US Canada we walked across Glacier National Park and had fun camping with others as we completed the U.S. portion of our hike. 
Backcountry entry into Canada hasn't been allowed since 2020, so we tagged the border at Waterton Lake. Tagging the border. Then we walked 30 miles to the Chief Mountain Port of Entry, which is also closed. From there, we hitched a two-hour ride with a very friendly family through the Carway Port of Entry and into Canada's Waterton National Park. Then we hiked back to the exact same Waterton Lake Monument and tagged the border from the Canadian side. Let's go find our canoe. We're having a blast heading north through the Canadian Rockies. In no time at all, we'll be at the source of the Columbia River to start paddling. Hello from the Columbia River. We've walked and canoed 60% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. In the last 270 miles, we made our long anticipated transition from walking to canoeing. The trail was challenging but beautiful as we walked north along the Continental Divide in Canada. Then we departed the Mark Trail. Goodbye, GDT. To head west towards the Columbia River and our canoe. We climbed to the high point of our Pacific Northwest Circuit. This was the hardest climb of the trip. Let's see if we can make it down. So we celebrated when we made it back to lower elevation with hot coffee. And finally, after 1,500 miles of walking, we made it to our canoe. Thanks, Lizzie, for letting two strangers store our canoe in your garage all summer. We carried the canoe three miles to the start of the Columbia River. We made it! It's hard to imagine this tiny spring-fed stream becoming the biggest river in Western North America. We're excited to be starting out the next leg of our journey, only 1,200 miles from source to sea. Our feet are enjoying the break, but our arms are a bit sore and tired. In this 10%, we saw one Canada lynx, tons of beavers, and five black bears. from PNC Mall 1890. We made it 70% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. After several hundred miles of canoeing, we're finally getting the hang of life on the river, and we had a birthday to celebrate. We start our days before sunrise because that's when the water tends to be most calm. We've learned to take breaks in the boat when there's a current to maximize forward progress. We enjoy our breaks on the beach instead when the river is more of a lake with no flow. The Columbia took us through a beautiful and remote part of Canada surrounded by glacier cap peaks. So far, we've portaged two of the river's 14 dams. We're able to carry all of our gear plus a 58 pound canoe all in one trip. Both portages were close to three miles which was a long haul. We celebrated Tim's birthday on the river. Renee gave me the all-star treatment. She cooked all our meals for the day while I went swimming and she surprised me with some extra treats. Renee hid candy in my life jacket. We've walked and canoed 80% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. Hello from PNC mile 2160. After a fun month in Canada, the Columbia took us back into the USA. The Keenly Side Lock was a highlight of the last 270 miles, which we rode our canoe through to get down the 171-foot dam. Then we made customs a bit suspicious when we arrived at the U.S. border by canoe. They inspected our boat and made us walk it a mile down the road before putting it back into the water. Another highlight was 130-mile Lake Roosevelt, where we enjoyed endless sandy beaches lining the shores. Then we made it to Grand Coulee Dam, which kicked off a stretch of many dams to portage. Four dams down, ten to go. We're getting more and more efficient out here. We use a gravity filter so we can filter water while paddling and we pee off the side of the boat. Quick stop to go number two. When toilets aren't available, we dig our cat holes far away from the water. Animals are reminding us that fall is coming fast, only 540 miles to the ocean. We've walked and canoed 90% of the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. Hello from PNC Mile 2430. Highlights of the last 270 miles include hitting our final state and having family come visit us on the water. We had plenty of days with low visibility. Check out all this smoke. But it didn't slow us down. We spent a lot of time carrying the canoe because we had to portage around five giant dams. Bushwhacking with a canoe on our head. We fought off lots of moths, spiders, earwigs, and slugs. We're feeling really strong and can see that our muscles have grown after all this paddling. As we approached the Oregon-Washington border, huge barges became another obstacle that we have to look out for. It can be quite lonely out here, but we had a blast when two of my siblings and their friend joined us for some relaxed paddle camping. Time is flying and we're itching to smell the salty ocean water ahead. We just made it all the way from the ocean to the Rockies and back. Hello from PNC Mile 2700. During the final 10% of our trip, Mother Nature threw some weather at us, which at times made it feel like she didn't want us to finish. But we had lots of reasons to celebrate, starting with our anniversary. While portaging, we walked right past a McDonald's, so we enjoyed an anniversary coffee date. We entered the Columbia River Gorge, which is infamous for wind and waves. We had to take a day off when we found ourselves surrounded by 8-foot swells and strong winds that were pushing us backwards. We got stuck! As we got near 
Portland, the river became tidal and we could tell the ocean was close. We paddled by massive ocean vessels, which made us feel like our canoe was insignificant. Before we knew it, the final city before the ocean was in sight. My family came to celebrate the final stretch with us. We thought the final day would be an easy few hours to the ocean, but then a thick fog rolled in and we couldn't see a thing. It was frightening, but we kept going. That's some salty water. Five miles to go. Less than a mile. We made it to the ocean and celebrated with family. This was another unforgettable adventure and we're looking forward to the next one.